All right, so we're back with Jesse from TI, and um, we had a great interview last year. Yeah. Uh, got to talk about some really cool high-level stuff, uh, and I hope to pick your brain a little more about what's going on Absolutely. this year. Absolutely. I'm excited. Uh, so the first thing that I want to ask you about is SST. Yeah. Right? So I've heard a bunch of companies saying, oh, this isn't the old Duo.47. This is the SST. Right. What, what is that? And so, what can we okay. expect from it? Yeah. So I think uh, maybe a lot of your viewers are familiar with our 5.4 micron pixel technology Yeah. Uh, called TRP. Okay. Uh, TRP has been around since 2014. That's what's in most of the consumer projectors today. They right. use DLP technology. Yeah. Uh, SST is our... Consider it our high brightness version of TRP. Okay. Also 5.4 microns. Yeah. So still 0.47, but it is more robust. It has the ability to support much higher brightness levels. Okay. On a 0.47 inch panel, we can support up to 8,000 lumens. And that's with laser? Laser or laser phosphor. Yeah. Illumination. Okay. Yeah. Um, so behind you, you see the first uh, SST based projector released in the US, which is the Hisense. L9Q? Um, L, yeah, L9Q. Okay. And, uh, you know, not to throw anybody under the bus here, but one of the things that happened with L9Q was the brightness is mostly there, but the contrast didn't live up to what they had said it was going to be. Uh, is that more related to SST or is that related to just optics or what happened there? From a DLP perspective, yeah. the SST pixel should actually have a higher contrast okay. than TRP, all else equal. Okay. So contrast is a system level issue that goes well beyond the DMD. Right. But SST, in theory, SST on paper, itself. Uh, like the yeah, optical design should be higher contrast, all, all else equal. What What's happening on like an actual technology level between TRP and, and SST? Uh, it's a fundamentally com completely different pixel architecture. And when we say pixel architecture, that means the pixel design, how it moves, its tilt angle, what happens when the pixel touches down on each side. It's a different tilt angle. Uh, is it more or less tilt than the TRP? It is less tilt okay. than TRP. TRP was really optimized for LED illumination. Yeah. SST is optimized for laser illumination. Okay. That's a kind of an easy sense. way to think about yeah. it. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, let's move on to, uh, actually, before, before we move on, let's talk about the, the big chips, the 0.78s. Okay. Um, we're seeing a little resurgence of those. Yeah. Uh, is that like in older technology, or is that something that TI is developing right now? No, we invested in a new pixel technology called HEP, H-E-P, okay. High Efficiency Pixel. Yeah. Uh, this was a few years ago. Um, so we're, we're, those bigger DMDs that you mentioned are based on the HEP pixel. Okay. And the HEP pixel allows for the absolute highest brightness level, highest efficiency as well. Yeah. Uh, particularly with LED illumination. Right. So our customers are taking those HEP, those HEP based DMDs that have been around for a few years and getting them into new project, new and, products. Yeah, pushing them in. Because what we're seeing is some really high brightness, like ultra high bright um, right. 0.78 chips. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, we still consider that new technology. Yeah. Cool. At, 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 yeah, that's not, I think when, when I think yeah, old big DMDs, those are the, the you know, the, the larger pixels that from you know, decades ago. Right, yeah. <laughs> those, yeah. HEP is very new and fresh. All right, uh, so moving on from DMDs, let's talk about controllers. Yeah. So the big thing was that we talked about last year was this new controller that was going to be able to do um, the uh, sequential refresh. Yep. Right? Yep. It came out. It came out. It's here. Yeah, finally. <laughs> so Horizon 20 from XGME is, I think, the maybe the only one that I've seen. So far, it's the only one in the US released. Gotcha. Um, and uh, I, think it's, I, I think it's great. It performs. Extremely well, Horizon 20, you know, mostly a success, but there are growing pains. Uh, I don't know if how, how deeply you are involved in that or, or how you've been um, following that situation, but one of the things that um, I don't think people anticipated was that with this sequential refresh, we're seeing screen tearing. In, especially in like gaming and stuff like that where you have really fast paced movements and um, you know, Xtremia said they're, they're, they're trying to uh, uh, alleviate that in a, in a firmware update. But my question to you is, how much of that is Xtremia's problem and how much of that is your 
back end, you know, I, when I say problem, I mean like their thing to deal with versus your thing to deal with. Like, is it, do you need to update the controller to be able to allow XGME to tweak it? Or do they need to, or is the controller capable of doing that already and they just need to fix it on their end? Like, or is it a joint effort? It's a joint effort. We work with XGME and all of our customers to optimize the DLP solution, including the software yeah. that drives the DMD. So um, we're working with them, we're working with all customers to try to minimize any tearing issues. Um, the rolling buffer, or what yeah, you call yeah. this is a sequential, yeah. I don't know what term. Roll, yeah, yeah, rolling buffer, sequential. I think people are calling it, is, like, is it 15 segment or five segment? Some people are saying like okay. segment refresh or something like that. Fundamentally, it, all, many LCD displays use that too. Yeah, right. Displays gaming monitors. Mm -hmm. um, it does lead to those artifacts, but the, the way DLP constructs the image over time sequentially using we call them bit planes. You know, okay. Basically, black and white patterns. It's what the DMD is actually doing, on or off each pixel. You're building up the image over time extremely rapidly. That we have the ability to mask any sort of tearing issues. And we're, we're trying to work through and optimize what we call the sequences. That's basically how the micro mirrors move to create the image. Mm -hmm. Optimize those to minimize those artifacts. So. Yeah, they're growing pains, but we have high confidence. And that's and that's the thing that I, I I think is important to understand is like the old controller was so mature, like it had so much time to work out all those things and add extra features and stuff. And this thing's brand new. Yeah, we've been working with a double buffer architecture for literally decades. Yeah, and this is our first rolling buffer architecture. Yeah, so this is the first product with it. Um, it's it's just going to get better from here. Um, and then same sort of same level question. Um, the old uh, controller could support you know 24p and 50p and uh, whatever other 25 I think is another one. Uh, but it looks like the new one is only 60 hertz right now or 60 and above. Um, the new the the new controller supports all of those other frame rates as well. Okay. So. In projectors with an actuator, like most 4K projectors yeah. that have a four position pixel shifting actuator, yeah. that has to be involved too in right. the frame rate uh, selection. So, with again, we've had two decades of, of the previous controller technology. I can confirm that the, the 84XX controller does support 24p, 50p. Yeah. Even without an actuator, 120, even 240 yeah, right. frames per second. So um, it's a system level issue. Not every customer takes advantage of uh, enabling every frame rate uh, node. Right. But we do have the ability to support those. Gotcha. It's, it's not a controller issue. So, so those we can expect that to come with the current tech. Like you guys don't need to do anything on your end for those for that support. It's just a matter of getting it implemented. System development. Yeah. And software. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, have you? Are you familiar with uh, Valerian's um, uh, RBE reduction tech? I've seen your tests on it, and it yeah. was very impressive. It's really interesting, right? And and from what I understand, that's not necessarily something that TI has enabled. They've, they've sort of done like a hack, right? <laughs> of of what the controller would normally be doing. Well, let's just say we're we're very impressed with what they did. Yeah. Uh, from a performance perspective. And yeah, they went above and beyond our standard solution. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. But uh, so I guess the answer. However, uh, I can say that in our new controller, that it's no longer a hack. It's the high high color refresh rate capabilities built into the new controller. Okay. That was, that was going to be my next yeah. question. Is you know if that was Valerian, you know, doing software development, doing you know hard, hardware and software development uh, in order to get that to work. Is that something we can expect to be part of the standard like package yeah. with, with It'll be easier yeah, for our, the, our customers to implement that feature using the, the new A4XX controller. Gotcha. Because it's, I mean, it's it's incredible. Like if you haven't seen it with your own eyes, like I, I highly recommend taking a look at it. I'm luckily not susceptible to the rainbow effect. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm glad I am. I, you know, I'm glad I'm not because I work, I uh, look at DLP projectors all day. Right. Uh, and. I have colleagues that can see it, and I can't. Yeah, and, well, that's, uh, that's nice for you. <laughs> I know. It's a, it's a, so you can put it on the slowest setting for me, and I don't mind. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I do respect. I see all the comments on the internet about Rainbow Effect. And 
uh, we are, it's, it's virtually eliminated. Even the people who are extremely sensitive to it, uh, we're getting up to, you know, going from a, the standard refresh rate of like 10 times per frame to 20 and beyond yeah. with the new controller. Wow. So, and I, you, you tested the, the Valerian. How many cycles was it? A lot. One frame? Uh, so I think like, I think for the, um, what they did was they took the, the red and green and instead of having just a red flash and a green flash, they alternate back and forth. The blue is, for whatever reason, you know, above my pay grade, blue is still the same. They never change the blue sequence at all, but red and green is like constantly alternating. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like 18 greens and 20 reds or something okay. like that. Uh, so yeah, just crazy stuff. Uh, all along those lines, what, um, what are you most excited for this year? So I think more SST, I mean like the ability to get 5,000 lumens and beyond in the home. Yeah. In, the, our goal is to take you know, DLP projectors today, let's say your typical 0 0.47 4K projector, and in the same size and, and, and cost, get to higher brightness levels. Yeah. Because we know consumers want to use them in more well-lit environments. Yeah. Uh, that will help with you know, adoption into more, more homes. You don't always have blackout rooms. So yeah. we know that, so 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 lumens, you can use it with some lights on at least. Um, so I'm excited about more SST projectors. Um, I'm excited about the 0.39 4K. So we just launched that in September of 2025. Okay. It uses our new Pixel. So it's, a, it's the first DMD to use our newest Pixel node, which is a 4.5 micron uh, pixel pitch. Okay. So shrunken down from 5.4. Yeah. So that's a 0 0.39 inch array that does the same, basically the same end resolution as the 0 0.47. And you know, with, what's the, so is the goal in that just a smaller package so it can go into smaller? Yeah, the, the goal is number one, yeah, smaller 4K projectors. Yeah. You know, not everyone wants the, the giant, not, I mean, compact, but still pretty hefty, yeah. you know, 2,000, 3,000 lumen 4K projectors. There's a market for people out there that are okay with, you know, 1,000 lumens. Right. Or 750 lumens that want compact, battery-powered projectors. But today, those are all 1080p. Right. If you want 4K, you have to upgrade to a, you know, it's a pretty significant upgrade. So, yeah. Well, except for LG is doing the 4K series. Um, the, the Cinebeam Q. Yeah. yeah. And the S2, right? The Cinebeam S is the same thing. Right. The yeah. ultra short throw version. Are those 4.7? Those are your point, 0.47. Those are 0.47. Right? LG did a great job taking our 0.47 and making it just as small as possible. Yeah. Um, they so just took out the speaker to, to be able to fit it in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the 0.39 would help shrink the optical engine and they can fit. Does it make it cheaper too? It does. To produce? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Smaller DMD, smaller optical engine, lower cost. Um, they can fit a better speaker in the is, next gen. <laughs> is the new package that is in the Horizon 20, I, you know, this is, you can, you can not answer this if you want. The okay. new package that's in the Horizon 20, um, it, it's got to be cheaper to produce and cheaper for them to buy, right? Because the Horizon 20, it, the, the value proposition on it is, doesn't make any sense. Like we've never, Never seen anything like that. Like 2,000 lumens, vertical horizontal lens shift, 4K, like, doesn't make any sense for 1,200 bucks, right? It's, it's a great deal. Yeah. Um, I've, I've almost pulled the trigger on one, like, many times. Yeah. Um, I need to call XGV and get a discount. Yeah, there you go. Well, maybe they wouldn't yeah. give me a discount. They're it's, like, we're, it's, we're selling you in a loss enough. already. We can't do it. <laughs> it's a very impressive product. Um, it still uses the 0 0.47 yeah. 4K with the new controller. It's got the new controller. Yeah. Um, and that does enable lower cost yeah. to okay. our customers and to, to end customers. Great. And so you combine the, the new controller and the new 0 0.39, the smaller 4K, yeah. you get to even lower cost 4K projectors. Now I know a lot of your viewers will say, smaller DMDs are bad. I, I've heard, I've read the, you know, why can't they use the 0.65? Well, it, it costs more. Yeah. It's, and it's bigger. So there are trade-offs. We, we won't stop making the 0.65 or the yeah. 0.47, but we're gonna enable a new class of 4K projectors for those consumers looking for something more portable and lower cost. I also just feel like at a certain point you have, kinda have to trust the manufacturers. Like if the 0.65 chip was like some magic bullet, like 
wouldn't manufacturers be using that? Like, it's, it's, it would be worth the extra cost for them to throw that in there if they could just create a projector that was automatically going to be better than everybody else just by having this chip in it. And right? it is for some applications, yeah. depending on what your goals are, your brightness level, your power, what you, the illumination type you're using, the size you're going for, all those things. Our goal is to make a nut, give our customers who make the projectors a lot of, a big menu oh, yeah. of components to build the optimal projector for their application. And that makes sense. And it, that's one of the things, one of the reasons why it's so hard to pick a projector these days is like, everyone is so specialized in one thing. Like, oh, is this what you're gonna use it for? Do you need to tilt it from the side? Do you need to hang yeah. it from the ceiling? How many lumens do you need? Like, do you want it to be portable? Yeah, we're seeing these premium projector features coming into the consumer yeah. space, which is really exciting. Like dynamic iris, yeah. uh, op optical zoom yeah. in portable projectors, Verti vertical and horizontal lens shift yeah. coming to places I have never seen before. Have so you had a chance to uh, see XGME here at CES? Not yet. Uh, they, uh, they're using the new SST chip in a, they're calling it the Titan Noir. Yes. Uh, and it's got dynamic iris and DBLE, so uh, laser dimming. <laughs> it looks awesome. Yeah. I think they said 20,000 to one native contrast. I haven't seen it in person, but yeah, when I saw the specs on yeah. that, I, I thought about how much money can I, well, would my wife let me spend on right. my, next, uh, my next projector upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> it, looks, it looks very interesting. We'll, we'll have to see uh, if the dynamic has, you know, Art, dynamic artifacts, you know, like it's so hard to do dynamic iris right. It is very, in, in combination with the dimming yeah. of the laser, those two combine, like ideally on paper, you can make an amazing solution, but getting the timing right, yeah, very challenging. Even the, I, I think maybe the best implementation of it right now is in Mexico's uh, Aurora Pro MK2, mm -hmm. but like that's the projector that I currently use, and I tend to be a little bit picky, but I can, I mean, I can see it, I can yeah. notice the the laser or the uh, the dynamic iris happening. You just kind of have to like enjoy. Yeah, it's so to. it's so hard to like watch a movie and not watch the projector. <laughs> I know you, right? you got to turn that off in your brain. It's it's hard when you work for a DLP. You're yeah. always looking for stuff like that. I'm yeah. sure the same way you are. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I wish I could just watch it as like a just a regular consumer. Exactly. <laughs> It's I almost, getting there. It's I almost like watching like really <laughs> poor content, like 1080p content, because I'm like, this is supposed to look bad. I just want to enjoy, you yeah. know, yeah. I'll just yeah. enjoy. I'll enjoy the the uh, the episode. Right. But it's getting better every yeah. day. It's, it, the whole projector space is evolving so so quickly. Yeah. Like I I look at I have this like shelf in my my projector room. And I've gone from lamp 4K to LED 4K to laser 4K. Yeah. Now I have a laser 4K with uh, iris yeah. and laser dimming in the last like five years. Yep. <laughs> like yeah. every year, I'm like, I get a. And they're, a and they're staying relatively, you know, equally priced. It's not like every time you get these new crazy, you know, uh, um, advances that it doubles the price. It's like, that's just what the old one was five years ago. Exactly. Yeah. All yeah, right. Right. So. No, but the problem is your old one is, is garbage. Not, not worth much yeah. on, the, uh, on, the, on, the, on the market. Exactly. <laughs> 10 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, anything else you want to talk about with TI? No, it's those three things. The new controller, the SST pixel for higher brightness, and then the 0.39 4K. Yeah. Those three things together. Oh, high frame. we talked about high frame rates last year. Yeah. 120 hertz 4K. It's still coming. Okay. So I, I promise. Yeah, we were talking <laughs> we, about the fact that... I hinted at it last year. It's firmly in development. We're working with customers, implementing it in their systems now. Uh, so you should see them. I, I can't say when exactly. Ultimately, it's up to our customers to figure that out, but uh, our solution is very far along in the development. And really so what you said was that the, the controller and everything can already handle that, but it's a matter of getting the actuator to to be fast the, enough. The two new things are it's, the, it's a dual controller architecture. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah that's what you had said. Each, con each controller will drive basically half of the DMD, so yeah. you can run it faster. Uh, and then also it's the actuator. The actuator has to move faster to keep up with the, the frame rate. So it's, does it have to be 480 hertz? Right, four, four times the standard frame rate. Yeah, yeah. So gotcha. 120 times four. Um, so those are in place. The, the, we have the system defined, the, the software is ready. It's just implementing it in customer systems as well. Uh, that's that's uh, what's coming over the next six to nine months, I would say. 
Cool. Do you think we'll see one this year? I hope so. I hope so. I can't guarantee. Maybe CES 2027. I, I hope before then. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope so too. Yeah. Jesse. Pleasure. Awesome to see you again. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. For Next watching. year too. <laughs>